All right. What did you just find out, Russ? Okay. So we were doing a little bit of research on Brendan Fraser, and he's going to be the voice of Robot Man in the new Doom Patrol. I'm super stoked about that, by the way. It's about time he came back. I'm Absolutely. A big fan. But I'm looking through his list of movies that he's done. And honestly, it, the only thing it needs to say on his wiki page is Monkey Bone. And that's the problem. We see Encino Man, George the Jungle, Bedazzled, Looney Tunes back in action. Like, Bedazzled. And yeah. then the three. He puts Looney Tunes, but not Monkey Bone. Now, okay, let's talk about that. This is a problem. This is a, how underrated is Monkey Bone? Monkey Bone is terrifically underrated. Tom and I are actually going to watch it tonight. And we're going to come back next week with a review. <laughs> because if you haven't watched Monkey Bone, it is about a down and out cartoon artist Heck yeah. whose character comes to life and is personified by Chris Kattan. Monkey Bone. Yes. You got to watch this. Brendan Fraser coming back. He's making a comeback. I know. And it's not the mummy this time. I know. But he's going to come back hot. I hope Just so. like this hot comics list, CBSI, comicbookinvest.com. Every week we do this awesome coverage of the hot books that are spiking causing a ruckus in the industry and it's so great that cbsi gives us this list so we were able to finish it thursday night and get it out for you guys hot off the press on friday oh i'm looking forward to editing this video while watching monkey we're bone. gonna watch monkey bone and edit this video tonight number 10 on the list number 10 batman king of fears the bilskin kevitz my variant cover favorite batman cover that has come out this year it's super super cool Freaking and it's, Bill, dude. it's great black and white this book came out on wednesday it's already selling over ten dollars i had five copies they sold off my shelf almost immediately mm -hmm. and it's just super cool and the batman king of fears if you weren't paying attention um kelly jones is back doing batman and Kelly Jones is the one who did like the Night Quest and the Nightfall Heck, yeah. and Bane breaking Batman's back in the mm -hmm. 90s. I love that 531 cover. Oh, Dead yeah. Man. Just did a ton of great mm -hmm. art for this. So check out this new mini series, Batman King of Fears. And if we see any other variants by Mr. Bill S., pick them up. I've been getting a bunch of Bill covers. Like I just picked up, you saw that Dazzler 27 I got, 32. Oh it's on my counter right now. I can't, I can't put it in the mail call. I'm like, ah, I want to send this out, but I need this for the myself. The Dazzler run is very underrated, even if it's just the super awesome covers. There's that one like so 80s it hurts covers where mm -hmm. there's like the convertible Firebird and the girl with like the roller skates <laughs> and, and the, the guy. Lights. Totally. Yeah. And the guy with a Coke on his nose. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's pretty absurd how 80s that cover is. Oh, I also got that Batman 400 with the Stephen King intro over on that shelf. Oh, too. yeah. No, so huge fan of Bill. Great cover. And it's nice to see him still working so much as he is. All right. Number nine on the list. I called this one. I've been saying that Jessica Cruz is like the most underrated DC character right now. And sure enough, number nine on the list, JLA, number 30. First full appearance. Going for 20 bucks. So that's good. And again, this is a more recent book. This mm -hmm. was in the new 52 run. It's definitely affordable. It's easy to find. People are aware of the fact that Jessica Cruz is getting to be more hot character. She is definitely showing up in more places. Mm -hmm. But this is probably one that you can find if you go searching some back issue bins. One of the coolest Green Lanterns that's out right now. And before we move on, I have to throw this out there because we do a giveaway in every video. It's probably a good time to do it. Sure. No better time than now. Because she first appeared technically in Cameo, but it's her first appearance in Green Lantern issue number 20. Jeff Johns created her. Right. And that was actually Jeff Johns' last green lantern issue of that run and i found one okay i found one over like 20 minutes in everett okay in the in the back issue bin nice so here's the thing i picked it up and i bought it for myself saw the list and said all right we got to give this away right this, this, is, this is going out to the community but there were a couple stickers on it yeah there was some of that residue so if you follow me on ig comic tom 101 you know that i remove stickers i teach people how to do it all the time so make sure to follow me there but i cleaned up the book right saved it so if you like subscribe and comment down below if you got any of these comic books if you had any hot finds this week we'll enter you in for a giveaway and we will announce the winner next week yep moving on to number eight. Oh my god all right tom so uh in 1990, the television show Wings started, and we had Joe and Brian Hackett. <laughs> going to do the Wings intro. And by 1995, <laughs> Sandpiper Air was still going strong. Do you know what also picked oh up God. Wings in 1995? Oh, what else picked up Wings, Russ? Tell us all. What picked up Wings in 1995? Venom. 
picked up wings in 1995 on the cover of Rune vs. Venom. Now, this was a huge print run book. This was a Malibu Marvel crossover. Right. Malibu Comics was getting phased out. Marvel was doing a lot of properties where they were crossing over mm-hmm. before they kind of took over all of everything from that book. And this book... Rune versus Venom number one. It's a one shot. We are seeing these sell for about thirty dollars on eBay right now. It's like as if something happened with I don't know Donny Cates or Venom or something. It's funny you should mention that, but Venom number five came out this week, uh-huh. and Donny Cates Venom run again, killing it every single time. Venom now has wings. So it's interesting to think yep. that the first time that Venom had wings was back in 1995 in Rune vs. Venom number one. Mm-hmm. And the CBS, I was talking about how this is a cover price book. I have these in my quarter bin. I have to go to my shop tomorrow and pull them out. Like, this is the type of thing. This is a quarter bin book. This is all across the country right Pretty now. much anytime you see the, like, Malibu yeah. stuff, you throw it in a quarter bin, you throw it in a dollar bin, you ignore it because it is not worth anything. Well, go check those bins. You're going to find them. Very true. Yep. Moving on to number seven, another surprise, Century Number 1. So Century Number 1 from 2000. Um, This one's kind of a puzzling one, but from the information we can get, it seems as though there's a new Century miniseries that has come out. I think we're two or three issues into mm-hmm. that one. And um, Jeff Lemire. Writing it, fantastic. Uh, this is supposedly taking place after Donny Cates' run of... You hear that name again? Donny Cates' run of Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. And with this getting tied into the universe, we could see more Marvel Universe movie tie-in. This book was going for 25 to 30. Now it's hitting about 50. We've got some graded ones that are going on eBay for $200 or more. And there are three covers available. You've got the one that looks nice, foily, and shiny. It's a J. Lee cover. Mm -hmm. You have a San Diego Comic-Con cover right. and then you have one that's a very jack kirby-esque cover so there are three different covers for this book make sure you pick the one you like coming in like a kamikaze in space star wars last jedi number four variant one in 25 making the list for the third time in three weeks oh my god special yeah. occasion i know and i know people are probably going to talk shit about amel and holdo but again this book Low print run. Mm -hmm. It's great. We were talking about it last week, how there was an auction that was at $70 and hadn't ended yet. That actual auction ended at $120 and was $130 after shipping. So we're looking at at least $100 for this one in 25 book, and it's just going up. It's too hot. If you were one of the people that bought it when we first did the coverage, you would have saved about half of what it's going for. I know. Dang. Those things are selling out. Star Wars collectors are serious, Russ. Just like your dad of the Stormtrooper shirt. Yeah, every time. Right. <laughs> All right. So we are halfway through the list. And you know what we do when we get halfway through? We break it down because the comic book community is so strong. They're going out hunting and we need to pay respects, Russ. We have some success stories. I want to shop at this guy's shop. Mixon 210, two weeks in a row, has found an amazing book. So he found an ASM 212 in a dollar bin. Oh, that first Hydro Man. Yeah. Good hunting my friend good hunting and then we also have sarge 1005 as well as retro tech usa both scoring an infinity wars number two that unmasked variant for cover price that's super cool well done well done i'm super excited about number five because the community and CBSI teamed up and helped us out on this one. It's so crazy. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Tom called out last video, hey, 1,600 copies are rejected, and there's this mystery variant we've never seen or heard anything about. I even made a joke about it, and all of a sudden, two days after we made the post, three separate covers came out. We thought there was one variant cover. There are three separate covers for the rejected, and we have photos. CBSI found them. We got shout-outs to all of the people that found those videos, and it's super, super cool to see as many variant covers as there are for this book, but we're looking at rejected, no number graphic novel, still $50, and it's probably going to keep climbing because the print run is so small. And I'm seeing reviews of this book, and people like it, and they say it's creepy as hell. Number four, coming in on the list, this is a really cool book, Bloodborne, number one. This is a video game comic book. Now, This isn't something you see all the time, a video game comic book causing a spike in the community, but this does happen. Comic books that are made because of video games typically have a really low print count, and they're typically not sold at your like traditional storefronts. 
Well, a lot of times you're going to see some of these sold at like Game Stops. Mm-hmm. Now, I had the opportunity to get Bloodborne. I had the opportunity to get Dark Souls. I've had the opportunity to get, you know, Skyrim when it came out. And very rarely do they spike to this extent this quickly. You'll end up seeing something like, again, the Hellboy Konami variant that it's relatively scarce, but there's mm-hmm. not a whole lot of demand for it now. And then 10 years from now, you yep. have people go, oh, I never picked up that book. There was only a thousand of them made. Mm-hmm. This Bloodborne number one came out, what, four or five months ago? It's yep. not that long ago. And we're seeing 25 to $30 for an issue number one. Even the second print is going above cover price at this mm-hmm. point in time. There's also a Titans comic variant going for 30 bucks. So there's a couple different covers to choose from. It's a hot book because it's a great game. And if you ever want to like have some fun, go through and just do some searches for like video game comic books and your jaw will drop. Some of those old like 90s Mortal Kombat comic books go for over 100 bucks in like fine condition. The Sonic the Hedgehog comic books, a lot of those Heck were really yeah. well. Mega Tur- Man. Turok Dinosaur Hunter after acclaim picked them up. Mm-hmm. Definitely is worth it. Right. Not not these ones we use as not coasters. Not the ones we use as coasters. <laughs> it's the other Turoks that were made by the acclaim ones yeah. after the video game came out later. That yeah. didn't put out hundreds and hundreds of comic book stores. Number three <laughs> coming on the list, Spider-Man number 10, Gabriel Delato variant, Spider-Verse. First appearance of the Anarchic Spider-Man. And if you haven't been paying attention, Edge of Spider-Geddon just came out. Spider-Geddon will be coming out of this one. Mm-hmm. And about 45 other spider offshoots that will be coming in the next few months. We've got Ghost Spider coming. We've got a bunch of other super cool things. But if you have the first appearance of Anarchic Spider-Man mm-hmm. branching off into a mini series, this is one to watch. And these Delato variants are always cool. Normally, they're 1 in 25 variants, and they are very highly sought after. Going for 40 to $50 right now. Nice. And this is a really cool character, too. It's like the punk rock Spider-Man. It's like rock and roll. He's mad. He's like Henry Rollins if he was Spider Man. Glenn Danzig is if he was Spider Man. <laughs> this is Glenn Danzig Spider Man. First appearance of Glenn Danzig is Peter Parker. It's, honestly, I I believe if Jim Steranko was born in the 1960s and grew up in the 80s as a pissed off punk rocker, he would definitely have been the front man of the Misfits okay. because he and Glenn Danzig are the same intensity and the same height. Yeah, so. that makes sense. I, I see where you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> hope he's not watching. Number two, <laughs> Nameless. Number one. This is a fun one. This is a great one. Tom has had this hanging up in the back of here for a while, and it just happened to be a random book that he pulled out that looks super cool. And I've always loved the cover on this one. And uh, what, we've got Grant Morrison writes it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. Russ, I had that sitting there. I know. It's not listed. Just doing nothing. Because it just... was a $2 book like a week ago. Mm-hmm. I looked over there. I'm like, wait a minute. I have that book. I'm looking at my edit on my last video reading this list going wait a minute yeah that's it's the, behind that's, your head is that listed no it's just yeah. sitting there so i have it hey that's cool creepy book horror yeah. book movie option grant morrison absolutely i mean they, do you need anything else right speculation boom there's a ton of people because they know that anything that's in a comic book can be made into a movie series tv series netflix series amazon series all of the above once three dollar book now going for fifty dollars <sighs> How does that feel, man? Oh, my God. I bought 10 of them at the shop, and I think that's one of them right there. And I may have just given it to you because I'm like, oh, you like Grant Morrison? Here, this is cool. (laughs) Right? Your life, dude. (laughs) That's it. I just kind of hand away pieces of paper to people, and then they're like, oh, cool. Thanks, Russ. Mm." Yeah, remember that book (laughs) you gave me? All right. Number one. This is awesome, man. This is cool. This is a really, really cool number one. I think this is super cool because this book needs some love. We've talked about this before. Um Coming in, Fantastic 448, first appearance of Silver Surfer, first appearance of Galactus. Mm-hmm. This is a great book. And we've talked about how, for the longest time, the pinnacle of Fantastic Four was 48, 49, 50. And you've got that Kirby Galactus. goodness, man. So good. And Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer. And it's a great story. And it's done well. And the covers are cool. And they're so iconic. And basically, for the longest time, every single price guide, you'd be looking through Fantastic Four. And it's like Fantastic Four number one. And then a bunch of little things. Mm-hmm. And then Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer. Boom, you boom, have those boom. three books. Yep. Well, now we've got Inhuman spiking and Black Bolt spiking and Black Panther spiking and, you know, Adam Warlock, him spiking and all of these it's other All these o- underrated books for quite some time, to be which, frank. Which, granted, it took a very, very long time. And now that we've got, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and a lot mm-hmm. of the other things happening. Getting in the some help. TV universe and the movie universe. More Fantastic Four spiking. 
But if you look at blank pa- Black Panther's first appearance going from three hundred to three thousand yep. dollars, and in Humans' first appearance going from two hundred and fifty to twenty five hundred, well, Fantastic Four forty eight has been kind of left alone for a while. Well, not anymore. Starting out at eight point five earlier this month, selling for one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. In a period of three weeks, we're now seeing 8.5s in that same comparable range going for close to two thousand dollars. Nineteen fifty twice. That's crazy. That's a huge jump. Yeah, huge jump with no word of a Silver Surfer being introduced into the Marvel Universe as we see it. Nothing with the Infinity Gauntlet. No surprises Honestly, coming. As I far believe as we know. it has to do with Dan Slott. New Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. issue number one just came out. It was a banger, man. There is a resurgence in popularity of Fantastic Four right now. And again, with the Disney-Fox merger, if we're able to resurrect Fantastic Four and make a movie that's watchable and palatable, we're going to see more of these things being pulled from people who are good writers. Regardless of what you think about Dan Slott's Amazing Spider-Man run, he is a good writer. Right. And the things that he's done have been great writing-wise, regardless of the choices that he made. And him working on the new Fantastic Four is definitely making a lot of these other Fantastic Four books spike. Well, when you're seeing True Believers hit $10 an issue. It's a $1 reprint. It's a $1 reprint that came out less than two months ago that are selling for $10 a piece. That says it right there. It's crazy. All right. Shout out to Mr. Christian Anderson, winner of the last week's Hot 10 giveaway. We're going to be sending you this gorgeous Middleton variant. Going to be in the mail to you. Make sure to go in the description and contact us so we can get this out. That's awesome. And as always, big thanks to Comic Book Speculation Investing, comicbookinvest.com. These guys got us the hot 10 list. We appreciate you absolutely. And as always, this final giveaway. If you want it, like, subscribe, comment below. Tell us if you found any of these books. Tell us if you like Tom's hair and make (laughs) sure you geek responsibly. Well put, Russ. Enough said. I have to say a huge thank you to this growing community. Again, I feel like every time I check our numbers, we've gone up so many subs. Our mystery mail call numbers are super high. All the peeps repping the merch. There's so much support everywhere. The team feels it, I feel it, and we all sincerely appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're gonna keep bringing the quality content.